mean? But anyway, let's not argue about a few few degrees. I mean, let's just say that is flipping hot. It's flipping hot, man. And right. there's not too much you can do about it. But I did come up with a, cu a couple of tips. Okay, marvelous. Okay, so you are let, uh, from that we can deduce you are no stranger to hot weather. You like it hot, I think. So, no, um, but, fresco, no you don't. Fresquito. <laughs> so you're a, actually a more of a cold weather creature. Well, uh, and I like it. Perfect. I like. I, I I I'm comfortable about 23, 24, 25 mm -hmm. grados. Yes. Well, that's a whole lot more than twenty five, Bruce. So well, what we'll happens? Work. Yeah, what happens to you? Do you go a bit floppy? Uh, well, I start floppy and then I just <laughs> I melt <laughs> into the floor. My wow. eyes are going like this, you know. You know, yes. when, well, with our poor um, 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 Dacia, our, our, our poor Dacia was trying as hard as it could to give us some air conditioning yesterday and it was a losing battle it just you know really? and here too here too this you look at the sky and you, you can't see the mountains you can't see beyond it's so steamy and then wow. you've got the stuff coming you know from the sahara that's mixed in 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 also it's 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 dirty looking it's humid it's muggy it's hot it's like cat on a hot tin roof, hot, isn't it? Well, you can call me Paul Newman if you want, you know. I'll call yes. you Chris. <laughs> I, got you, I can see you in a string vest in this heat, Bruce, quite <laughs> frankly. Or like Henry Fonda, you know, when he's right wiping his face and neck with a, with a handkerchief. Like, you can't handle the heat! That kind of thing. That's right. That kind yeah. of thing. Yes. Exactly. Oh, all those so my movies. list is a little simpler. Okay, so where you came from in the United States was it hot there? No, it was Wisconsin. Although it would it, even Wisconsin, where we would have twenty five, where it would get down to like minus ten Celsius, minus fifteen Celsius during the winter, and we would have huge amounts of snow during the summers. It got hot. It would get, it, it would go all the way up to thirty eight. You know. 38 degrees or something like that. Okay. Yeah. And is, would you say it's a different kind of heat here that you've had to get used to then? There's a lot of things that you have to get used to here that are different. Yes. yes. <laughs> the heat is the heat, the type of heat is one of them. Yeah, and that was my PS. You already stole my PS. I have oh, hate it when that, that happens. That was my PS. All right. All right. And and um, so you've had to learn the ways of the Portuguese because, of course, they've had a head start with this culturally and they know how to handle it in a way that us Brits, for example, don't. We get to and, and Gumpers in the chat, please tell us how you cope with the heat, because we might come up with with our um, sort of, you know, collective intelligence, hundredth monkey type breakthrough here. If we share our intel on how to stay cool in this hot weather and um, the Brits, of course, get here. Uh, they take they don't take any notice of the shutters. Uh, they just take all their clothes off and get burnt in the first few days. Um, and <laughs> they have no idea how to stay cool. And it's not until they're acclimatized that they even think about that. They're just like, yay, bring it on, heat, light, sunshine. I'm just taking all my clothes off and having a barbecue and drinking loads of beer, which is a terrible recipe uh, for certainly getting yourself some sunstroke or, or exhaustion from the heat. Now, the Portuguese have their shutters, of course, don't they? And adjust their lifestyle. You can't carry on living like you want to live when it gets as hot as this. So over to you, Bruce, for your first tip. Okay. Well, my first tip is a bit of an edit. You know, you send me writing and I'm an editor. I have to edit it. You said tips for staying cool. I ain't got none. I have no tips for staying cool. I can give you some tips for staying cooler. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough? <laughs> I'll take okay. it. Well, you know I've got to pick on you, Carl. You pick on me all the time. All right, my first tip. It's, it's what we call our on-screen chemistry, Bruce. Yes, it is. <laughs> and and don't tell the people about our off-screen chemistry. <laughs> you can read about that in the in the scandalous gossip column. Yes, of, yes. Hey, have you got one of those, Bruce, in Portugal Living Magazine? Oh. Um, people have submitted, but I've tended to take their comments off because they're too scandalous. <laughs> Have we not matured enough as, as an expat no. uh, foreign, foreign immigrant no, community have to have a, a, a gossip column yet? 
No, we've brought our stuff with us. But I'll tell you what, Carl, if you want to write a gossip column with your name on it, okay, I'll publish it. (laughs) I'm tempted. I am so tempted. Well, don't be tempted. Tempted is being easy. You know, so was the so was Adam and so was Eve. They were tempted. (laughs) And now look, and now look. Okay, all right. So maybe I should manage my temptation. All right, sorry. Back to you. Tips on staying cooler. Cooler. Tip number one. Yeah. You know, and I tried to come up with stuff that, you know, you know, there's a lot of just common sense. You, you were talking about, about people and it's not just Brits, it's Americans, Canadians, you know, and a lot of other people that come over here, take off their clothes, don't put sunblock on, don't put sunscreen on, you know, um, when they take off their clothes, it's all this kind of mustardy color skin and all that, you know, and they sit out to bake in the sun. Okay, so then their skin it turns red and they get, um, okay, let me give a tip. My first tip would be wear cotton. Wear cotton. Natural yes. fibers, okay? T-shirts are great in this weather, okay? You want to stay away from synthetics and polyesters. I mean, it's one thing, like if I'm sitting in my chair and you're sitting in your chair, okay, Okay, the back always gets sweaty, especially oh, in this doesn't it? That's what but I'm talking with, to you, Bruce. With the, co- with the co- cotton, it will absorb that, okay? Yeah. And it you don't stick as much. You know what Quite. I'm saying? Back to your chair. Right. With, with, with polyesters and synthetic blends, you will. So that's my first tip. Well, it's like a greenhouse effect almost, isn't it? They're not very permeable, some of those uh, man-made fibers, are they? So you get it, you get, you t- yeah, you get sticky and sweaty, and that can lead to all sorts of further complications as well. So good tip number one there, where, where natural fibers like cotton, and of course, you can get some decent apparel here in, uh, in Portugal, can't you? We, I, don't, I don't think, I don't know if cotton's made it, but it's, it's certainly a textile oh, yeah. producing okay. you, Any market, if you go to any, any market, you know, um, the, there'll be vendors there selling cotton, and it'll say 100% algodon. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's what's look at. Algodon is what you're looking out for. Hundred yes, percent cotton. Good tip. Thank you. And they are coming in from the community as well. That's fantastic. Um, so tip number two on staying cooler. Okay. You want to make sure if you've not done it already, you want to make sure that you change all of your incandescent lights, which create heat. Okay. Ooh. You want to change them to LED lights. Yes, good. I'd never thought of that. They burn cool. They give you light without giving you heat. Yes. Yes. Now, yes, in the back in the days of Jimmy, H- I don't know if you saw this earlier on, but I'll, I'll learn about Portugal quiz question of the day is about uh, Jimi Hendrix's flat in Mayfair in London. And there's an iconic Portuguese product in that picture somewhere. But it's in those days, isn't it, where you'd have been glad of an incandescent lamp offering a little bit more heat in in freezing london uh, in the 60s but not here in portugal not when it's getting warm when you can't sleep at night you don't want a light bulb that's blasting out half a kilowatt through, throughout the night do you yeah so there you go or a series of them around yeah. the house very good bruce very good okay, okay. And this can be easily done if by going to um various chinese shops or leroy merlin or wherever and replacing your old incandescents with uh, new LED uh, electronic lighting rather than incandescent lighting. Right. Very good. Number three? Yeah. Have all of your fans going, even if you have aircon in the house. Okay. Okay. Why? Because the fans will move that cool air. Like yeah. if I have an aircon in my bedroom, all right, and I'm sitting out here in my den talking to you, okay, rather than keeping it in the bedroom, by having the fan going in the bedroom along with i have a ceiling fan along with the inverter okay and i have a fan over here in my den it's 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 moving that cool air around you know if you just put on the fan it's going to move hot air around but if you have air con and you have your fans on it will move that to different areas so be good you know, very good. Okay, uh, that's good stuff. Yep, and um, we've we've already had a. Um, I can't quite see what's going on here. Oh yes, I can. Uh, we have a. An, is it an unhealthy 
solution to dealing with the heat. Thank you, Pete, for that. That will come onto the screen in just a moment. That's a great picture, Pete, by the way. Um, and also, look, we have a disagreement. Look at this, Bruce. Um, I disagree about cotton, says Seth. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I do like to feel a nice natural fabric against my body, uh, Bruce. As someone who's ridden across the Mojave Desert, I heartily recommend Cool Max. I guess so. That's taking, moving from the old man made fibers that do make you sweat into newly engineered and innovated man made fibers that help. So we take your point here, Sarah. A Cool Max, never tried that. Sounds like a cinema or something, doesn't it? And other stuff that's engineered to evaporate the sweat that pours off you. Okay, so NASA inspired um, textiles, of course, and notwithstanding those things that actually help. Uh, that have been engineered to do so. Take your point, Sarah. Very good. Uh, good intervention. Well, good luck finding that at Portuguese markets. <laughs> True. Yes. Um, given the choice of buying um, a 100% cotton T-shirt at a Portuguese market or finding a Cool Max, it's going to be easier, to be fair, isn't it, to find your 100% cotton Well, it's going to be cheaper, too. I'm I'm not taking issue. I think that, that, that Sarah has a very, very good point but the point is that my point is that you would have to probably order that online okay rather than shopping locally and i can pick up cotton t-shirts you know like i'm wearing right now from my local market for two euros a piece okay now i don't know how much these new um you know i'm an old fart you know i'm at 74 years old i can't keep up with all this stuff i have a hard enough time keeping up with you carl Bruce, your old farts guide to, guide to keeping cool in Portugal is excellent. And uh, that can be a little appendix, can't it, for those of a more adventurous disposition who want to go uh, researching cool max uh, can do so. But I, I'm, I'm with you. Two euros to stay cool with a, some man-made, uh, some uh, natural fibres. Perfect. OK, let's get back to that fantastic list that you've created. And thank you for going to so much trouble, Bruce. Well, when you give me in some, when you tell me to do something, Carl, you know I quiver. Okay. <laughs> Except Stop for that stuff people. about uh, stroking your rooster or whatever it is. <laughs> it's. I'm not going to do it's that. A, it's a feature. I'm not going to do that. It's a feature that uh, I'm. I, I am slightly uncomfortable about, but I just can't let it go, Bruce. But anyway, back to your. Back, back okay. To your... Uh, number four gets back to the fans. And this I learned from my partner, that you want to turn one of your fans backwards because it will pull out the hot air from your house and pull it, take it outside. In other words, we have one in the bathroom. Yeah. The bathroom window fan. And I, of course, set it up so that it would be sending, moving the air around toward me blowing you it around yeah. yes. it pulls it out of the house so what? it reduces the amount of heat that's built up in your house okay so uh, do you have to have the window open then and uh, yes okay so you're you're you're, you're basically making an extraction system exactly plan. Uh, okay all right which leads us on i suspect i don't want, i don't want to um disturb your flow as it were um, but if you're leaving windows open, we have the problem of insects, which you might come to. No, 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 no. The first thing that happens when I move is mosquiteros. Okay, so you've got your nets up. You've got your, yes. your screens. Okay. And everybody should. Okay, yeah, that's fair my enough. PS. That's, I, I'll get to my, my PS, which, okay. Number five um, is kind of common sense. Stay inside and drink a lot of water. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. And finally, just to sum it all up, picking up on what you said earlier, um, when we moved here to Portugal, okay, and I hope people can, Bruce didn't understand how to stroke the rooster. Just show me what to do. Are you going to stroke my rooster now, Carl? That's not how it works here. It doesn't work. <laughs> People have to stroke yours? Uh-uh. That's the only... <laughs> now, turnabout's fair play. Some say it's one-way you know, track. I will stroke your rooster if you stroke mine. I never in all the time that I've been thinking about the Good Morning Portugal show did I think it would come to this. But here I am. Here we are, Bruce. Okay. An important point, I think, for yes. all yes. of the people that have moved here from elsewhere. Yes. And it, you, you started on this, but... Um, when we first moved here, 
we took, we have three dogs and we took them to the veterinarian. And the first thing that the veterinarian said to us is that dogs that come into this country, but that are not genetically Portuguese. In other words, they weren't born to Portuguese dogs. They, they, they're not used to their, their systems are not, have not, are, 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 they need to be adapted. Okay. And so there are shots that, you know, they're more susceptible to Leishman, that Leishman long word that I can't pronounce. You know, they, 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 they need more shots. They might need more wormings like. Uh, yes. Times. Yes. Okay? Yeah, uh, yeah. The same thing. The same thing holds true. I believe for people. Okay. More worming. We have a, uh, we have a like, <laughs> you don't need to be wormed, Paul, unless you stroke your rooster. <laughs> we get the point. We're not okay. acclimat we're not acclimatized, are we? We're not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I have a neighbor on each side of my house here that is Portuguese. Okay. And they don't have any air conditioning. And I look and I think, oh my God. How on earth? How yeah. are they? And these are older people. Yeah, How yeah. are they? But this is they grew up here. Okay. Yeah, that's right. There's something in their system, in their blood, whatever, you know, that that they can deal with it better than we can. So we have yeah. to find solutions, you know, and, and those were my tips for you, okay? Those are fantastic, and they are being met with other tips that have come in as well. So thank you very much for those, and we'll complement them with some of the information that's coming in as well. Um, I think Nubianet has a, a tip here. Yes, uh, of course. Uh, uh, go out early and get in by, yeah, lifestyle. See, that's what the Portuguese people know how to do is to yep. live around it rather than fight against it um which we tend to do don't we we love it at first because we move to a hotter country than we're used to and then it begins to be a bit of a challenge and then we might go up against it but it, ultimately you give in don't you and go with the flow go out early and get in by one i think maybe a siesta or sit still and drink water in the coolness uh, with the shutters down it helps to retreat to a mildly air-conditioned space this can be a mole if you don't want to stay home go out again as the sun starts to set it's a cali tip that's great uh do as the portuguese do says james don't go out in the afternoon stay in the shade vent see we want to continue living our crazy mad dogs and englishmen sort of uh, lifestyle don't we but you if you go with the flow you're not going to be going out in the worst of the heat <clears throat> and of course Good up, good morning to you. Hello, is that Toto? That's Toto. Yes, Toto. that's Toto. Good morning to you. Hello, Toto. Oh, um, yes. Um, don't go out in the afternoon. Stay in the shade. Ventilate your home in the morning and after dark. Use your window shades. And of course, the heat is not at its height in, at midday, is it? The sun is at its height at midday, but the residual effects of that sun will be felt uh, mid afternoon, won't they? And all the stones of the house will be warming up, and you get all that mm -hmm. thermal mass, which then, of course, can make it difficult to sleep at night. So, and that's why uh, I was quite disturbed when I was touring central Portugal, first of all, uh, Bruce. I mean, let's face it, a lot of the villages are depopulated, but when yes. you drive through them and all the shutters are down as well, and you can't see mm -hmm. a soul because they're all inside staying out of the sun, you think, like, what has there been an alien invasion or a zombie apocalypse? I can't see anybody here, but we're well, you're not there long enough. If you stay there till midnight, okay, then they will come outside and sit Correct. on their stoops and talk yes. with each other. Yes, or go down the local cafe, of course. So you can't, and this is the problem, isn't it? Of seeing it through our own um, accustomed lens. You've got to adjust your lenses uh, when you come to the new country. So that's great, James. Thank you very much for that. Um, uh, we had the cotton disagreement, of course, and we've had some good guesses about well, the Portuguese iconic item in Jimi, Jimi Hendrix's flat in Mayfair in London. Solar-powered air conditioning and a pool. He kept that quiet, Pete. Um, just sent you my rather unhealthy solution to the heat from last night, Carl. And here it is. Now, is this a good idea, uh, Bruce, do you think? to? I mean, getting in the pools uh, is a lovely idea, of course. Uh, drinking beer, and I love it how Pete smokes while he's swimming. Um, he must have, <laughs> he's, he's got that down to a fight. He must look like a, a tugboat, so to speak, uh, as, he, as he plows up and down with a little uh, plume of smoke. If he does, it must be backstroke, right? To, 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 to stay Carl, smart. you <clears throat> all these things, just write them down. There goes your gossip column. Yes, that's right. I have heard that allegedly, etc. etc. Uh, and that looks like a, a jazzwood bar. Great picture to go with it, too. Great, great picture to go on there. Our spies have captured this image here, and he's rocking a Superbock Mini 
as well there. Okay, and I do hope you got out of the pool when you needed to pee after all that beer as well. <laughs> <laughs> Peter. Okay, but drinking beer, you see, that will be another temptation, won't it, Bruce, uh, for the foreigner um, to stay cool with some cold beer. It's, it's dehydrating, isn't it? It has a limited effect. Well, you know, um, in, in um, USA English, um, and I'm guessing that probably <clears throat> and the British English has the same expression, that you don't, you don't, uh, you, you simply rent beer. You don't Quite. buy it, you rent you it. You rent it, absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the rental costs are quite low um, here on a, on yeah. a, a pack of yeah. <laughs> minis. Like, and it, it is the perfect size. The, 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 uh, and that's another sort of cultural challenge, isn't it, when you arrive? It's like, would you like a beer? And then someone gives you a beer about this big, <laughs> tiny, tiny little thing. Like, well, what am I supposed to do with that? Yeah. And it, well, you actually understand the beauty of the mini after a while, don't you, that it's it is cold and and and... You drink it so quickly, it stays cold. It's not going to be like a great big Kaneka, which warms right. up in the heat. So stick to multiple minis rather than having a great big British uh, uh, or German sort of uh, flagon of beer. Of or do what we do here in Spain. Make yourself a nice pitcher of sangria. You start with red wine. You add yeah. a lot of ice to it. You put in the beverage of your choice. I use vodka, oranges um lemons maybe part of a grapefruit and it's a healthy <laughs> um it 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 it, 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 it will you know not be bonkers but you will also feel cooler who doesn't like to be not bonkers at some time during the day i like in that with a bit of fruit fresh fruit in there as well that's great uh sue's likes a ceiling fan now, I know that some people have struggled to find the ceiling fan, have they not, here in Portugal? And uh, more and more are, are coming onto the market, I think, driven by demand. I, I've, I've, I've struggled to understand that. I've seen ceiling fans wherever I've gone in Portugal, um, but uh, some people have struggled to find them. But that's a good, that's doing what you said before, Bruce, right? Circulating the air in the room, disturbing the hot air, which is nice to get, to get rid of that stuffiness. Perfect. Okay. Um, thank you, James. Thank you, Nubianet, for your comments on this. And Sarah, for being here as well this morning with a bon dia. Fabrics have moved on, says Pete. Oh, as an aside, are you a Michael Bolton fan, Bruce? Of course. Of course you are. Um, if anyone enjoys Michael Bolton, he'll be performing. Three more artists included today at Ayrish in the Jardins de Marques. Tickets 45. That's expensive, isn't it, by Portuguese standards? But you are talking about Michael Bolton and three other artists. Who are they, Antonio F? Um, actually, Moreno wool is great to wear to stay comfortable, especially while well, they sound luxurious, don't they? Can you get woolen undies made of Merino? Well, I didn't know about that. Bamboo is also a new uh, material, isn't it, that people... I mean, not linen. Linen, yeah. linen underwear as well. Hmm. OK, uh, very good. Um, here's something to do with cotton. Get a bandana, wrap a couple of ice cubes in it and tie it around your neck. Change out when the ice is gone. Yeah. Keeping the neck cool has um, a, 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 seems to have a sort of multiple benefit, doesn't it? Or an exponential benefit. Very good. And talking of that heat, top temperatures today uh, should be between 24 degrees in Sagres and 39 in the Alentejo. And the Azores will be will vary between 21 and 23 degrees. Um, so that's what you're looking forward to today. How what's the highest temperature that you've experienced, um, Bruce? Yesterday and today, 44. Uh, so, so actually, right now, we right you've, now. Made, you've made history in Portugal. No, in Spain. In Spain, of course, yes. <laughs> uh, but it will be it will be getting to and, 44. But looking, you know, we've looked at um, the temperatures in our homes in Castelo Branco and yeah. in the high Alentejo, the Alto Alentejo. And it looks like that it's going up from 32 today all the way up to 38 by the time we get back to Portugal on Saturday. My goodness. Okay. So you are preparing yourself. You'll be using your own tips here. I will. Um, in the last couple of minutes, we've got together here this morning, Bruce. Uh, thank you for that. Um, and um, is there any any other message you want to share with us? I mean, you 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 mentioned people's reservations about Facebook, but that's where Portugal Living Magazine is now. Get used to it, right? Right. Okay. And there is. I hate Facebook too. I mean, right. let me go. I don't like it. I don't like the controls. I don't like 
the fact that I look on Google for, let's say, a ceiling fan, and all of a sudden I'm on Facebook and I see ad after ad for ceiling fans. I don't yeah. like that the word is collusion, not corroboration or coordination, collusion. Yes. You know? and, and I think, you know, I, I, I don't like the way that artificial intelligence is being used, especially on Facebook. But I'm looking at it. This is a business thing. If you go on and, you know, you don't get caught up in the web, in the web, you know, of, of, of Facebook intricacies. Now, I don't know. You know, I, that's why I stick to I have a page. I have yeah. a page. And then I also have a group that, uh, you know, it's kind of a spiritual community for people that are looking for um look, looking for something other than roman catholic other than you know Ang anglican other than jehovah's witness other than mormon other than seventh day adventist other than storefront you know a, a more progressive storefront. approach just we have a, a facebook group called people of faith online community i'm loving that bruce and i remember now you telling me about this some time yeah. ago and it's a good reminder so basically none of the above faith group right right okay and um uh, and and so um th th this this is somewhere all are welcome who don't fit into the categories you've just described and what do you have a service on a sunday as well online is is, is, is that something you're because you're, yes. you're, you're, you're a pastor aren't you yes i am yeah right okay so what how, how does the service work um it's it's it it's collaborative it, it it's not me standing in a pulpit preaching down in people. It's like, I will give something that, that, um, to think about. Um, and well, the best thing to do is to go online. It's, it's people of faith, spiritual community, Very nice. Facebook. people of faith, spiritual community, um, online spiritual community. And you'll see, we talk about all different things and people give their insights. And, and it's like, we have everyone from, Hindus and Buddhists to um, very Bible believing, you know, Christians and um, people who say, no, uh, I've lost, I have faith, but I've lost all hope. It, let's put this, we're not religion or religiously oriented. We're more spiritually oriented. Um, and a good thing would be just take a look, look at some of the posts that are up there and see if they appeal to you. I started okay. that group originally because I couldn't find a place that I felt comfortable here um, in Portugal. And so I started this page and most of the people from it are, I, 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 I ran some demographics on it. I would say 30% are from Portugal, 10% are from Spain, and the rest are from the USA and Canada and the UK. <laughs> they wow. can't find what they're looking for, you know, in their homelands. But you're providing it, Bruce. That is fantastic. Loving that idea. And let's talk about that more next time we see you. So um, thank you so much for your tips this morning. Love to Russ and all the, all our pooches there as well. And uh, you'll be back in Portugal soon, I suspect. And we'll talk maybe more about this uh, this whole idea of uh, um, a um, broader faith community next time we see you, if that's okay. okay. Don't forget your gossip column. And I, yeah, I am so tempted with that. I mean, I don't like to see myself as a gossip, I, I, quite the opposite, in fact, the very yeah. soul of discretion. But it just sounds like it'd be quite good fun. If it's to... done the right way, it can be a yeah. lot of fun. I think so. I think so. So the invitation is this. I will help you. As long as I don't have to stroke that thing again. <laughs> it's not the first time somebody said that to me. <laughs> That's the first thing in the gossip column. All right, Bruce, thank you so much. Love to Russ. Thank you. Love you. Love Bruce, thank you. Bye for now. There he goes. Oh, that's the wrong jingle. That's in case we swear, isn't it? So there we go. Uh, let's have a nice round of applause. <laughs> Always great fun talking to Bruce. And let's keep that applause going because we're going to have Slater Malays joining us. Good morning. Hola, bon dia. Good morning. Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Thank you so much for being here. Finally, here. finally. Uh, thank you. Sorry for all, all the um, all the problems you may have had in the uh, back office there. But this is perfect, Sada. You're here with us now, uh, live on the Good Morning Portugal show. And, and I've been wanting to talk to you for a very long time because you are a legendary real estate agent in Lisbon, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> I've, uh, I've been a real estate agent for uh, the last 18 years, uh, always representing REMAX. 
uh, in Portugal. 